February, or I'm sorry, March the 9th. See how fast time's going by. Look, you guys. Remember I said this is a spiritual thing we're going through? Um, you see those three men running? And see how it's, it, that says sprint. It doesn't say spirit. But it's three men running, which man's number is 666. See, there's three men running. And the Bible says those that flee from the noise will fall in the pit. Now, if you look underneath the legs, how the knees are bent up, this isn't just by coincidence. They look like the number seven, don't they? Each one of them. Each one of those look like a seven. Then I'm telling you, that's like God's fingerprint. And where it says, now that says spirit out there. Now, you know in the Bible where it says, on the wings of an eagle, when, e when Egypt was lifted up out of uh, Pharaoh's hands, he said God carried him out of there like a wing, like on the wings of an eagle. See, the signs, the signs are all around us, you guys, all around us. And the Lord said, you know, he's going to put signs out for us to see, okay? God's in control, but he always said the devil's the ruler of this world, okay? Now, this is my second video I'm going to be doing on this. The first one I had problems with it, it didn't, it wouldn't come out for some reason. I guess they're trying to kill my message here. Um, I'm telling you, this is a spiritual battle we're in right now. And uh, they don't want you. They want you in the flesh. That's where they want you. That's why they're constantly attacking you while you're sleeping. They could be they could be attacking you while you're wide awake uh, or sleeping. It don't matter. I call it stinking thinking. Okay, prisons are full of them, and it's the thing. Do you go with the flow, or are you going to resist the devil like the Lord says to you? The Lord says resist him, and he will flee from you. And another thing. Jesus, he came here, why? To overcome what was in the world. To overcome the devil. Now I want you to go to uh, 2 Corinthians, if you would please. Chapter 10. Now, I like, I want to read the whole thing, but 3 through 5 are Pacifics on this. But this is a spiritual battle, okay? 3 through 5. For we... For, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Okay, what what we see happening in the flesh, it's like me in the, uh, hmm. it's like this. You see me, that's me in the mirror. Okay, I'm, I'm a man in the mirror right there. Okay, but I got an angel blowing a trumpet above my head. Now, the reflection. You see how that's just a reflection of me. You don't see me, but you see the reflection of me. Okay? The things that you're seeing happening in the world today are the spirits. See, the spirits come through us. Okay? They need our bodies to host. Okay? To host them. To do to manifest what you see being done in the world today the good and the evil okay that's how it works here okay in this world now we're getting ready to go into a better place a much better okay the Lord's getting ready to destroy all this okay because most people are going in the same direction in the same direction and they're heading wide are the paths to the hell now why did jesus christ come here to overcome what was in the world okay so that we would have help hope because if he hadn't came and did what he did we wouldn't have made it see god knew that that's why he came in the flesh okay and did what he did now if the devil would have known what he was doing he wouldn't have crucified him he wouldn't have let it happen i guarantee you he wouldn't have let it happen uh, cause he didn't want nobody to escape.
but that ain't what's going to happen. God's in control of everything. But not only that, God had this plan way beforehand. The devil just never knew it. Okay, because God knows everything from the beginning to the end. Even those names that are in the book of life. Okay, those of us that have been chosen and separated. He even told you about the mockers and the scoffers. You know, I mean, all this stuff beforehand. Okay, now listen. Here we are in chapter 10, 2 Corinthians 3 through 5. For, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay, in the spiritual realm. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You see what I'm saying? When you get that stinking thought, thinking stuff, like, that's where we have to become warriors, man. We, we, we're making our choices. You know, do you want to do what's right or do you want to follow what the devil has got going? You can see most people are going with the flow. And even the churches. I've been into a lot of churches and I've, <laughs> I've been told to leave, you know. You're scaring the people. I'm saying with the Word of God, I'm scaring them with what's written in the Word of God. And, and you're asking me to leave? Well, you can stay, but you got to listen to our message. And I said, well, I already know what your message is. I can see that. You know, and they didn't want me there because they knew that I knew. And I'm not saying all of them. You got some bold preachers out there, but it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Okay. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You see? Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that he is Christ, even so we are Christ. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority which the Lord has given it us for edification and not for your destruction I should not be ashamed okay now read that whole it's good the whole thing now this is about spiritual battle okay I'm going to also blurt, blurt out some uh, um, other verses I'm, I'm not going to read them all it would take way too long but uh James 4 7 submit to God and the devil will flee from you okay devil will flee from you man I mean because everything that comes up he knows he's got he's got God to deal with there he'll flee he's looking for the easier softer way you know uh, John 4 4 we are from God greater is he in us than what is in the world Okay, 2 Corinthians, that's what I just got through reading to you, okay? Now, uh, Peter, chapter 5, 8 through 9, the devil's looking to devour and resist him and stand firm, okay? Now, you know Ephesians 11 through 17, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Remember what I told you, this is a spiritual battle, you guys. It's a spiritual battle. The flesh is weak and it's corruptible. Our new eternal bodies, devil can't touch them. Won't even be able to get into our mind. Won't even be able to pervert our thinking. Nothing. Nothing. It's going to be eternal. Boy, I can't wait for that, man. I mean, you know, man. They attack your mind here constantly. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 Thanks to Jesus Christ who giveth us victory through Christ. See, do what Jesus did, we can stand up against this devil. He gives us power and authority over scorpions and snakes and evil, wicked things. And he doesn't do anything that we can't overcome. Okay? Through Christ. Okay? And you got to have faith. You got to believe, too, in yourself. Okay, then, and no, Jesus came here to establish 
a personal relationship with each one of us. And yes, he can. And you should believe that, that he can. Now, Zechariah uh, 4, 6. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Yeah, by our spirit. Okay? When you, when we, remember he said we must be born again? We must be born again? Because the flesh is what's going to uh, keep you here. It's going to attach you to this place. You don't want to be attached to it. We got to let it, let it go. Now here's John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief, he comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Now Jesus, he came that they would have life and more abundantly. Okay? Not worldly life like you see here. You know, when he says more abundantly, he means, you know, you got to remember now, we're passing through this life, and this life is a testament, you know, if we're worthy to uh, be in his kingdom, you know, and if you're just chasing after what's in this world all the time, like you got to have more and more and more and more, and you're only going to be here for a short time, what, that, what does that tell you? If you were the creator and you were looking down at somebody greedily going through their life, even though it was short-lived and they take nothing with them, you see what I'm saying? You got to look at it from in the spirit, okay? This is the way the devil would have you do it. Because, see, the devil's always said you're not worthy. You're not worthy. That's what the devil's here to prove that. All right. Now, uh, 2 Thessalonians, okay? Chapter 3. You know what? I'm right here right now. Um. Uh, I'll read it. Chapter 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you and keep you from evil? But the Lord is faithful. See, you got to have faith. Big time faith. You know, and faith, you know, seeing the things that you've seen around here, you should have faith. Seeing those spirits that you've seen flying around me, in me, and out of me, and all that stuff, you should have faith because it's all very real. And the Lord did it for your purpose to see these things so that you would have faith. Not only that, but you would see this really is a spiritual battle and see what it is that we're fighting against. Okay? We're not fighting against flesh and blood. This is a real spiritual battle, people. And we have to use our spirit. This spirit is just hosting in this flesh and blood. Okay? But if we are more walking in our spirit, we will have more control over this flesh and blood. Or the other spirit of the devil can come in you and try to control that flesh and blood and have you doing what the devil would want doing. You see what I'm saying? Um, you remember when... Uh, Jesus was standing at the shoreline when he, he showed us that he revealed himself to his disciples in his body that he raised from the dead because they seen the scars where he was pierced and his wrists and everything where he was pierced at. They seen all these scars. And then when he left, they seen him descend into the heavens in his uh, earthly body. Now, when they seen him again, they were out fishing. They came back, they caught nothing. And a man was standing on the shore and he said, Young men, have you caught anything? And, and Peter said, Nothing. He said, Cast your nets on the right side of the boat and you will catch some. And he did, and he did. Okay? And then the one that Peter or Jesus loved the most, he goes, It is the Lord. And then when Peter heard that, because <laughs> they caught like 153 fish all together. When Peter heard that, he put on his outer garment and he jumped immediately into the water. But he waited for the rest to show up because when he got to shore, he didn't recognize who that person was. Now, why do you think the Lord came in another body, okay, where he can literally take full control over that body to where he can put you to sleep? Literally put that body to sleep and then he can come in another body. Now, why do you think he did that? He did that to let them know what it is in this world. That we are passing through this world. 
that our bodies are spirit that these bodies are nothing but flesh and blood that the uh, the spirit host in okay and he can I've seen him literally put the demonic evil to sleep in people I've seen him put the body to sleep like turning the light switch off when we drove through a rainbow we drove through a rainbow twice not he didn't do it just one time for me to see it he did it two times for me to see it other words have no doubt mark okay when I seen this, because this guy was rambling on uh, to me, and I'm like, you know, I wish he would take a break, take go to sleep or something. Wham! We drove into that rainbow, and he just his head dropped onto his chest, passed out, <clears throat> just passed right out. And I'm like, wow, you know that? Wow, I can't believe it! Right when we drove into this rainbow, and then as soon as I drove out of the rainbow, his head lifted up immediately, and he started rambling right where he left off at. And then there was another rainbow. I said, did you see that? Did you see that rainbow? And he's like, no, he didn't see nothing. And then as soon as we drove into the other one, I go, look at this. I've got another one right here. And as soon as we drove into it, his head dropped again. That fast. Just like you guys see these orbs flying around me and stuff like that, that rainbow sits around God's throne. And I'm going to tell you something. These, these bodies we're in, this flesh and blood, is that's all it is. And he could turn it off like a light switch with you in it, your spirit. He could turn it off like a light switch, just like that. Like it doesn't even exist. He could do that. But uh, he let me see this. Just like when Jesus was standing on the shore, he wanted his disciples to see that his spirit could be in another person's body. Remember, our bodies are the temple of God. They're the temple. And we were bought for a price what Jesus Christ did on that cross. And by his blood, we are redeemed back to the Father in heaven. Okay? Remember this, man. This is a spiritual battle we're in. And, I, you know, the churches are asleep. There's a few that are awake, but I'm telling you, they're not even talking about how real this spiritual battle is. You know, that's where we should be really focused on. This is a spiritual battle, man. You, mean, you need to realize this flesh is nothing compared to what's coming. I mean nothing. This is the second time I've did this video now. The first one, it just disappeared. All right. Romans 12, 21. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Revelations 12, 11. Read that one. 1 Timothy 6, 12. Matthew 6 18 first john chapter 3 8 the son came to destroy the devil's work that's why the jesus came here to destroy what the devil was doing if he hadn't came and did what he did what kind of hope do you think you'd have right now what kind of hope do you think you'd have if you consider that we wouldn't have any there's going to be quite a few people getting out. I'm thankful to the Lord that we have this channel. You know, YouTube. See, the Lord's in control. And we're using this channel. You notice it's not on the media, television, the news or anything. They're not talking about this. That's because it's all run by the devil. Not that it had to be that way. You know, but when you took Jesus Christ out of everything, the schools, the governments, everything... That gave the devil uh, full authority here. What do you think? Haven't you noticed a big change since they did all that? See, I'm I'm just the opposite. I won't I won't they won't take him from me, and I'm gonna proclaim his name until he comes and takes me out of here. Not only am I gonna do that, but I've been testifying with people everywhere I've been. I've traveled this nation twice, not once but twice. The devil don't like me. I don't know if I shared it on my last video. Somebody asked me about, you know, encouraging. You know, that was saying it wasn't very encouraging what I said. And I've always told you guys from the beginning, I've never, ever uh, said I was, I was here to tickle ears. I'm here to uh, give you the straight truth. And that's it. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I wish more people would come to this channel. But I'm not here to tickle ears. I'm here like this could be my last message. I never know when my last message is going to happen. But I want it to be 
one where I'm not going to be ashamed and wish I would have said something differently. You know? I want to be improving in my messages in the spirit. Not in this world in the flesh, but in the spirit. You know, when I get all my attacks and everything, it's in the spirit. How is it that I know all these things? Because the attacks and everything that I've been having. And why did I have these attacks? Because I won't do what the devil wants. They offered me, if you guys, I'm telling you, they've offered me a lot of money to worldliness. But see, the Lord, he didn't reveal to me what I know now until after I refused that. But I knew something was wrong. And uh, I, I knew something was wrong ever since 2001. And uh, the Lord didn't reveal to me until after the devil tried tempting me. When the devil tried to uh, tempt me, seduce me with money, and let me tell you something. I was sitting there. Uh, my eyes started opening up at 9/11, at 9/11, 2001. And but the Lord didn't reveal nothing to me until the devil tried to seduce me with money. And that's when that job I was doing. They said if I spoke less about Jesus Christ, they'd turn my life around. And with famous people, rich people, and all this stuff. And I, I told them that would never happen. And as soon as I said that would never happen, then my football coach uh, from seventh grade in 2014 appeared out of nowhere, 40 years later, offered me a job at Tampa Bay Stadium, 60,000 a year. When I told him the games were over, and then all of a sudden some guy come beating on my door, offered me 400 cash a day, flipping homes, remodeling them, flipping them. And uh, I asked him, First thing I said is, can you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And he goes, I don't know what to believe with all these religions. I said, I don't care about all these religions. I said, what I want to know is what's in you. And he just looked at me and smiled. And he got back into his truck and left. But at first, before he did that, he goes, you need to get your butt in that truck and save yourself. I said, I can't save myself. I said, only Jesus Christ can do that. And he smiled at me and he got in his truck and left. They're here to seduce you. And they're here to, and the Bible says that too. They're here to seduce you and steal your soul. And they'll, they'll cause your affliction so that they can seduce you. But didn't Paul say it is better to suffer affliction because in our afflictions, we grow from them. And did he not say the, the Lord will provide us our needs? Look, I'm getting by, okay? I'm taking a shower every day. Yeah, I still sleep in my truck, so what? Yeah, I plan on being in here until the Lord shows up. You know, it's wicked. You know, it's wicked out there. But this is where I plan on being when the Lord shows up for me. When he pulls me out of here. This is where I'll be. Would have been nice, you know, to be in a, a church that knows what time it is. But that's not the case. That's not the case, and we know it. Most people are going around blindly, willingly ignorant. You know, they don't want to know the truth. I mean, you know, God help them, you know. But it's worse now than it was two years ago, you know, when I was doing this. It's like they waxed colder, just like the Bible says. God bless you guys. I hope and pray that you guys get something out of this message. And uh, I love each and every one of you. And remember, these bodies we're in, just remember your spirit is what, it's your spirit that's caused, that you're moving around in. It's your spirit. This flesh and blood is not who we are, okay? It's not who we are. Remember when Jesus appeared on, to his disciples and that, other, and that other man? They said they knew it was the Lord, but they dared not ask. <laughs> God bless you guys. I love each and every one of you.